I released a vlog about this movie. You released a vlog about this movie. They released a vlog about this movie. Today is vlog day. For tomorrow, no one will care. Welcome to Channel Awesome. Much to discuss today, my fellow visitors of the channel. Just remember, we may be a humble community internet radio station, but at least our lives aren't boring. There's drama happening somewhere out there, and if there isn't any right now, just wait a bit longer, and I'm sure it will start up. First, some clarifications from the head office. The nostalgia critic has never been dead. The Last Angry Geek has never been dead. Death is a propaganda tool by copyright bots on YouTube. There is not, nor has there ever been, a smarty. Things do not exist outside of Channel Awesome. Well, except for Malasia, but scientists are still trying to determine if that is real or not. There is not, nor has there ever been, a demo reel. Except as that one April Fool's video done by Brad Jones. He should really make more of those. Ha ha ha, Admiral Crackers, you're the best. There is not, nor has there ever been, a blistered thumbs. There has been a thumb with a really annoying paper cut on it, though. There is not, nor has there ever been, a nostalgia chick. I mean, a reviewer just for girl stuff. I think we've already established by now that girls do not exist. Speaking of, news from Mars Girl, whose name is spelled with a U, which means she does exist. Recently, she has discovered that there may in fact be as many as 28 more Land Before Time movies. These ancient films, produced through a lost recording medium known as VHS, tell of a time before that which we know now. Dinosaurs may be involved, but dinosaurs can't talk. Or at least, they've never talked to humans. Dolphins, however, have confirmed that dinosaurs talk to them. More on this story as it unfolds. New news from the partisans of Kickassia. You will recall that these are a small but dedicated group of Channel Awesome supporters who wish to re-establish the nation of Kickassia. Even though no Channel Awesome producers are involved in this effort, nor do any of them even live in Nevada. The Partisans today declared open hostility towards President Kevin Baugh and the sovereign nation of Malasia and have begun a full-scale attack on the country. This attack consists of water balloons with the words Re-elect the Critic written on them. Unfortunately, it seems the Partisans do not have particularly good arm strength. And for some reason, they are attempting to attack from the backyard, which consists of a sizable desert area, so the water balloons have fallen quite a bit short of their target. But they did disturb some jackrabbits in the area, so they're calling it a success. Channel Awesome CEO Mike Michaud said today that they would send support to the partisans in the form of nut goodies and an Amazon gift card. Brad Jones recently enjoyed his eighth glorious year as being better than all the other producers. In a recent poll of Cinema Snob fans, an overwhelming, and quite impossible, 107% of his viewers voted that Brad Jones is the only talented person on Channel Awesome. And in fact, the only talented person on the internet. I feel like the internet should be only two things, porn and the Cinema Snob said one voter. Everyone else is, like, totally gay, said another voter, who we're pretty sure is eight years old. In a recent announcement, Brad Jones was quoted as saying, Stop calling me, Linkara. It's starting to get annoying. And now, a word from our sponsor. Feeling blue? Feeling green? 
feeling purple, feeling orange, feeling polka dots, feeling pinstriped, feeling existential dread about the state of our lives coupled with a deep sense that all of this is wrong, that this is just a simple joke copying the format of a much more popular and much more talented community radio series broadcast from a town that exists out in the desert, and maybe the result of a split timeline depending on who you ask. Well, to deal with those mental ills, you need a beverage that refreshes the mind and body that is purely imaginary. Drink Cuba Cola. Cuba Cola. It's entirely fictional. Tensions continue to mount in the nation of Haganistan and its cruel and malevolent ruler, Diamanda Hagen. All hail the mistress! The tensions, if you'll recall, come from the fact that Diamanda Hagen, Know her and despair! Has stated that she is fictional, leading many to question whether or not Haganistan is also fictional, and therefore all of its citizens are fictional. This is a bit of a problem for the nation, seeing as it is kind of hard to pay taxes to a country that may not exist. Diamanda Hagen, SURRENDER YOUR SOUL UNTO HER NOW, has stated that it does not matter if the nation is fictional or not, she's still going to use you as a footstool. An update on our story from Mars Girl. It seems that 27 of the Land Before Time tapes contain various new plots from the series, including Littlefoot meeting a robot dinosaur, a reboot, and a story that retcons the series as actually taking place in a post-apocalyptic setting wherein dinosaurs became the dominant species again after the fall of man, hinting that the events of Jurassic Park are canon to the series. One tape, however, despite being labeled as Land Before Time 23, Sharp Tooth's Dance Contest, is actually some kind of alternate history of this very website. The tape is still being analyzed for its authenticity and details. More on this story as it unfolds. And now, the Community Calendar. On Monday, Battle Geek Plus will officially change their name to Battle Geek Plus or Minus to reflect how they have joined forces with their antimatter counterparts. On Tuesday, Lucky Six will announce that they were actually rounding up this whole time when really they're Lucky Five. On Thursday, Film Brain and Mike J will complete their merging into a single gigantic brain creature that will devour all of England. Punch and snacks will be provided to those who attend. Suede has said he might follow suit and try something similar in New Zealand. On Friday, Yo Mars is. On Saturday, Shark Jumping will attempt to jump over shark movies. The event will not be narrated by Lotus Prince, because we're pretty sure he's just that he is an evil genius guy who does that weird video games show, but just wearing a different hat. And finally, on Sunday, the Dom will be eaten. This has been Community Calendar. The faceless man who lives in your home and reviews pop songs, you know, Todd, announced today that he would be ending his long-running rivalries with the rap critic and rocked reviews. He has said that he can no longer afford to maintain his feuds with them for several reasons, including his inability to defeat the rap critic at a rap contest but also rocked Review's ability to listen to several Nickelback albums without his ears bleeding. Said bleeding is believed to be a condition where the body's blood attempts to evacuate the body to avoid having to listen to things it doesn't like. However, that last one might be a fluke, since I actually kind of like Nickelback. His primary reason for ending his feuds has been said to be... I just want to take more pictures of my dogs, okay? Look at them. They're adorable. And they don't make sense. I mean, why would I even listen to Katy Perry when I could be showing you all my dogs? Do you want to see my dogs? I have pictures of them. All those in attendance replied, yes, they would love to see more of his dogs. And now, traffic. Site traffic continues to go up and down as people visit the site. And then leave again.
That is all. This has been Traffic. The Nostalgia Critic denied rumors today that the purpose of the clipless reviews was to work his co-workers to death. How many times do I have to tell you people? He said to a wall, which may or may not have had a camera in front of it to record his ramblings. I do the clipless reviews so I don't have to actually look at the movies again. I have been sleeping a lot better ever since then. I'm also considering just reading a summary of the movie on Wikipedia so I don't have to watch them a first time either. Despite his denial, this community internet radio station has received reports that Tamara and Malcolm were hospitalized recently and have been placed under psychiatric care. The only words that could be discerned from their babbling were, The green, the green, I have a green screen in my mind. When also questioned about his decision to review movies still in theaters, the nostalgia critic replied, Oh, that, that's because I'm actually from the future. About 15 years time, actually. I'm still doing this show, but the movies that are in theaters now have been out on Blu-ray and Minidisc for a while now. You heard me. Minidisc is coming back. None of us saw that coming. Kaluna is not real. She is a star that some scientists, including dear, sweet, beautiful Spoonie, with his luxurious hair. Um, <clears throat> I mean, some scientists believe that Kaluna is, in reality, a star that believes itself to be a person who makes videos on the internet. Kaluna was available for comment, but when people approached her, they were drawn into a gravity well, petrified, and became small planetoids. Kaluna then made a statement that said, Whoopsies, my bad guys, let me turn that off for you. And then she became a person again. Well, to be accurate, she turned into a bottle of laundry detergent and then a few Lego pieces, but then became a person. I always get those mixed up, she said once she was human again. An update from Mars Girl. With the assistance of dark magics provided by Count Dracula from the planet Dracula, and the two-headed creature he made by fusing Terror Obscura and the Horror Guru, although strangely without using their heads, they have been able to discern what exactly is on the mysterious tape that shows an alternate history of our site. It seems that in this version of events, SF Debris was not forced into becoming a corporeal being instead of just a disembodied voice, and he led a revolution on the site. It was an easy task to accomplish, for in this version of events, Malachite did end up conquering the world and killing many of the video producers of the channel, although his reign of terror was short-lived after he slipped on some spilled coffee, got amnesia from the head trauma, and decided to retire as a farmer of baked beans. In this revolution, many familiar, yet long-gone members of our community were there to assist him. Little Miss Gamer was as contemporary as Rerez, emerging from various pieces of technology to answer letters and guide the people. That Jewish guy joined forces with Rantasmo to create a new show about the representation of LGBTQ individuals in Jewish media. Tiger and Leftover Media battled Luke Mockery for the affections of Brad Jones, who survived the battle with Malachite and was still considered too good for us by his fans. Some jerk with a camera put down his camera, and instead became a podcaster with Sage, restarting Scam Police, under the auspices of their new boss, Ask Lovecraft, whose next decree for podcasting was some kind of fiesta for bars, and how they could be used to summon interdimensional gods who would devour us all upon approach. And the Screen Crashers played their final game with the site itself. Its remaining producers fighting one another for scraps to lay claim to the titles left behind by others. Omega and Brandon Tenold each declared themselves to be the new Angry Joe. Sean K battled Sean Faust, you know, 
the epic fail guy, to lay claim to the lost microphone of Nash, hoping to win Rolo T's affection in starting yet another podcast. That released only one episode, and was then never heard from again. And everyone else, like Vangelis and Chris Stuckman, Ross and I. Ross, Il Nage and Leon Thomas, Dina and the clone of Leon Thomas, and all the others, well, it turns out they were wildly successful without Channel Awesome. They all formed their own website, which eventually bought out Channel Awesome, forcing everyone to change their video hosts again. Many did not survive these various machinations, or rather, they all survived and just got different jobs. It turns out that Sursum Ursa was a Pokémon this whole time, so she had that going for her. And when the dust settled, there was only one producer who could rise to stand alongside SF Debris. D-Tunes, because he had missed all of that while working on an animation. Listeners, this is a lot to take in. Not just for myself, but for all of you. While you and I both contemplate these strange possibilities, let me bring you now to the weather. Listeners, today has been a day of great contemplation. It has been a day where impossible things, and yet all too possible things, have been shown to us. We have peered through the looking glass, or rather peered at a VCR, but you get the idea. We have seen what may have come to pass, old friends united with new ones, and things that we have experienced before repeated over and over. What does it all mean? Well, 
there isn't really any meaning to this. It was just a possibility. There are always possibilities, my friends. Tomorrow, I may decide to stop announcing news from our humble little channel and go back to my real passion, reviewing lamps. Tomorrow, you may decide not to watch any Channel Awesome producers. Tomorrow, you may decide to watch all the Channel Awesome producers. What is past is past. The future may go one way or another. We know only to meet it head on, hopefully prepared to face it. But it is coming. It is coming. But I trust you all to make the right decisions. If not tomorrow, then maybe tomorrow's tomorrow. For now though, I bid you April Fool's Channel Awesome. April Fool's.